Yes. Yep. We're all good. All right. And you can see yourself right down there in the corner. All right. We're live now. <laughs> all right, everybody. We're going to start. Thank you for coming to the uh, Inland Empire WordPress meetup group. I'm going to stand <laughs> right here because that's a little tricky. So, yeah, um, tonight we got Jason Tucker speaking uh, on adding video to WordPress. But a couple of things I just wanted to talk about. Um, number, number, the first one is that WordCamp Las Vegas is coming up. And I think right now there's no more tickets left. But uh, how many of you guys uh, develop with WordPress? On a, on a daily basis, or just are just getting introduced to. What about you? If you are you just getting introduced to? Okay, wait. So um, let's just go around the room again and introduce ourselves. I'm Various. I am a, a freelancer, WordPress developer, and I've been doing it for about four years. And I uh, also help organize this media group. Jason. I'm Jason Tucker. I'm presenting tonight. <laughs> All my info's up there. <laughs> okay, that's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, my name's Mark. I'm still just trying to get into WordPress. I'm just learning. Greg? Oh, I'm Greg Franklin. I'm a WordPress developer, and I work for ServerPress, which uh, provides an application to run on your computer that sets up WordPress and uh, one more right now is to launch people. Uh, my name is Leno, and uh, I've been troubleshooting and freelancing, and I'm interning where Jason works at the church. And so he um, introduced me to WordPress recently, so I'm chatting him and learning from the man. I'm Melody Pike, I'm a real estate agent. I, um, I love helping my own staff and not to plan to be able to do that for me. Mm -hmm. I'm Ron. I'm plus one with her. Uh, but I actually deal with this a little bit. I teach at Cal um, Poly, but I teach in fact, I'm going to teach web uh, development, which is tragic because I know so little about it, so it's great to learn more. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Barry. Um, I do web security, web infrastructure, uh, e commerce, and uh, Work as for some of my customers and uh, other products, and I run blogsec.net. I'm Benjamin Mueller, I'm a freelance web developer, do a lot of WordPress work through that, and then I'm a family member of our website. I have a co space here. Nice. Awesome. So I won't, I won't take up a lot of time, but uh, WordPress, I just wanted to let you guys know that we are. Like, it's a huge community of WordPress here in Southern California. There's about 14 meetup groups uh, that meet throughout the year uh, here in Southern California alone. And so what we're trying to do is we're just trying to build this community of uh, developers to kind of help each other, share knowledge, and grow together uh, in you know, our WordPress web developers. We have a we have a group online. If you if you're on the meetup group website, which is it's not on the screen, but if you go onto the actual meetup group, there's a URL for a Facebook group. Just click on that URL and you can join the Facebook group. It's on it should be on the left side of the screen. Um, there should be like a little globe and then a little Facebook symbol. Uh, just go join the group, and you know we're here to support one another. And uh, so today we're going to be talking about adding video to WordPress. I'm going to let Jason go ahead and take it over. Cool. Hello, I'm Jason Tucker. I'm a uh, WordPress developer. I worked at a church over in uh, in uh, Fullerton called EB Free Fullerton. I'm a systems administrator there, and I also uh, take care of all of our our website stuff as well. Um, so today I'm kind of going through how to the basics of how to add you know video to WordPress and also how you can do some additional things using some plugins, both free plugins as well as paid plugins. So let's go uh, kind of walk through here a little bit. Oh, fun. Got a little weird CSS going on there. So <laughs> so there's um so why would you use video? Uh, I love video. Um, I don't know if you noticed I, I brought um, Google Glass here. We can. Play around with that later if you guys have ever used Google Glass. It's it's great to be able to just kind of put on and record video, and take pictures with it. 
and do that sort of thing. Um, we're streaming live onto YouTube. You can actually stream live onto YouTube using these as well. Take pictures and have them show up onto, onto Facebook and Twitter and all those sorts of things. But video is really the you know the key thing there. Just look at the demographics here, having like six billion you know views happening there um, per month. It's it's big. Um, so uh, using uh, using a video WordPress, there's a couple ways to do it. What I like about about WordPress is that whenever there's a hard way to do something, somebody will figure out an easier way to do it. And so one of the things they did is this thing called Ellenbed. And what Ellenbed does is it lets you be able to take just like the URL of the video and just put it into your post, and then that instantly turns it into the actual embed code for your web or for the video that you're trying to embed. There is a service called VideoPress, which we'll talk a little bit about, and then um, uploading the video directly to WordPress, which I don't want you to do, but I'm going to show you how to do it. And then uh, lastly, we'll go through a little bit of plugins, and then uh, my favorite thing, which is live streaming. So let's talk about a little bit about OMN. So if you ever go to YouTube, you can go and uh, take a look at a, a video. You're watching the video, and you're like, wow, that'd be a really great video to put on, um, on my website. Uh, how do I do that? So what you do is you just grab the, the long web address that's on the top there in the, uh, the YouTube, uh, YouTube site, and then uh, paste it onto your website. Um, from there, it'll automatically turn into a video box, and you'll be able to play it from there. Uh, if the video, if the URL is this really long thing with all of this extra stuff in, regarding uh, like uh, playlists and such, if you go down the very kind of in the middle below the video screen. You can click on the link there, and it'll do a share box. So from that share box, you can grab the uh, the, the web address from there and paste it in there. Let me go through a little bit here and kind of show you how that works. So here's my. Awesome, very basic website. And let me get logged in because it logged me out. And if you have a computer, if you want to kind of play around with this, either at home or what have you, you can go over to uh, demo.wpmedia.pro and you can take a look at the, uh, the pages we're going to be manipulating here. So this site has very, very little stuff going on here. Um, we have one post. We have a couple pages. If we go into one of these pages here, I have a couple demo pages um, that I've set up. So let's load up the OEmbed page. I'll kind of show you how it, how it's supposed to look, and then how, um, you know, how, how to actually get that um, video to display. So as you can tell, all I put in is just the link to the YouTube video. We'll load up that, that link. We'll kind of work a little backwards here. But I'll show you where you can get that video. So here's a, an episode of WP Water Cooler, um, the show that I, I record on Mondays. And um, this video I want to share onto the website. So if I go down, either grab this link that's up here, or scroll down a little bit and click on Share, you can grab this, uh, this, this link here and copy it, and go back over to your website and paste it in here. Um, once you do that, if you go and preview your changes, you'll actually see the video gets auto-embedded. Um, that's using OEmbed, and uh, that technology, what, it, what it's actually doing is it's, it's looking at how that, how that um, URL is set up and what the domain is, and then displaying it on there. So if you go to Vimeo, for instance, that will work on there. If, um, there's, there's a huge list of them. So if we want to find out what that list of um, of sciences is we'll do we'll go over to the uh, codex and on here is this list so you have blip TV uh, daily motion Flickr there's all these different um, sites that will uh, that, that are supported by this and it either images or photos or what have you and by the way if you have any questions if you're watching at home and you want to uh, ask me a question, you click on the question button and kind of ask me a question there. Anybody that's in the room here, feel free to ask me a question. I'd be more than happy to be uh, interrupted. So now that we have that, that link on there, we can go back to the website and you can actually watch that video and, and see it. And there's not, you know, I didn't have to do much other than add that one, that one link. 
right in here. Um, normal, you know, the, the old way of doing things was that you'd click on uh, the share button and you get this embed code. And if you look at the embed code, it's it's really just uh, if you don't know what you're doing and you're looking at this, you're like, wow, there's an iframe and then there's the height and width and there's all these types of things that can be, you know, that you could potentially change and kind of mess up. I can show you a little bit about how um, how you can manipulate the sizes of the video and, and stuff in just a minute. So if we go back to the uh, to the website and we go over to the media tab. Nope, sorry, wrong one. Go over to the settings in the media area. Um, these um, these right here are set up for just for your images. And if you install a couple different plugins, there's some that will override uh, this particular O embed. And I'll show you that in just a minute. So if we go back to the posts, or rather the pages, you can see if we go back into O embed, I can actually take this, you know, take this video and you know, I can put it in as many times as, as I wanted to or have different videos on here too. So if I go back to my post after saving it, you'll see when I refresh it, you'll see all of this, you know, those videos that are on here. Um, yeah, this is great for you know taking a video and putting it on there, and you're not really too sure how the coding is supposed to work. You don't want to do any of the embed codes or anything. You just use this O embed technology and put that link in there, and you'll make it happen. So let's go back to my slides here. And we'll talk a little bit about VideoPress. So VideoPress is something that was, um, if you've ever used uh, WordPress TV for any of like watching any of these types of talks, or if you're at a, a big um, a big WordCamp or something like that, you can watch those videos that are there. Well, those videos that are on video on WordPress TV are actually hosted using VideoPress. Um, if you're you know someone like us and we want to you know have those videos on there. For just under $60 a year, you can have those videos uh, be uploaded just like YouTube, but without any ads, without any of the extra stuff that usually YouTube does. Um, the limitation is it can be as long as you want, want it to be, but as you get longer video, the quality needs to be lower because you can only upload one gig worth of video per upload. Um, and if you use Jetpack, which is a plugin that I'm going to install here, I can kind of show you how. Uh, Jetpack kind of works with it. So let's go back to um, our website here and we'll take a look at Jetpack. So we go over to plugins. And I kind of cleaned house a little bit here. So let's go and uh, install Jetpack real fast. So Jetpack is um, it's a plugin with, uh, with mini modules installed. And what these modules do is uh, allow you to do um, a lot of things that typically your, your web host just either doesn't allow you to do or it'll make it slower or you'll have some type of performance issues with it. And so what you're doing is you're leveraging a larger server like, um, like WordPress.com to take care of that for you. And it does it all you know, kind of automatically. So once you install Jetpack, you'll see that it has a, a box up on the top there asking me to go over to um, WordPress.com and configure it. So we'll go over there real fast. And WordPress.com, totally free. You can, um, you can uh, just go on here, create a new account, or use an existing account like I'm going to. Hopefully that's the correct password. I reset it a few minutes ago. And then it takes me back to my website and it says, okay, you're all ready to go. So if you look in Jetpack, there's Jetpack statistics, they have a comments module, they have sharing. Um, if you go all the way down the bottom, there's a new one that they added called VideoPress. So if you activate VideoPress, um, I didn't purchase VideoPress, so we'll see how far it'll let me go here. But what it does is it's like YouTube where you can upload a, upload a video um, using it. If we go on the configure screen, you can see, you know, what kind of blog is this connected to? How do you want it hosted? Um, where do you want the videos to be um, set up? And then do you want it to create it so it'll work with 
uh, mobile or um, not mobile? How do you want this to be accessed? Do you only want you to be able to access it or other people to be able to access it? That sort of thing. So once that's configured, it should give you a new area in your posts or like I was doing it in a page where you can upload a video. Yep, so if we go to video press, and it's asking me what video format, it supports pretty much all of the majors that are out there, MP4, M4B, MOV, those sorts of things. So you upload this just like you would with uh, YouTube. Pick your video file and upload it. And then it pretty much does the O-embed thing that we just did with YouTube um, as well. Yeah. So it uploads to your server, and then, and then WordPress pushes it to the video? To nope. So what it does is it uploads directly to VideoPress' servers. And they'll host it. They actually host the initial video, and then it, uh, it, it creates multiple copies of that video in different file formats. So if you, have a, if you have a device that only supports, say, like, Og Vorbis, or it only supports uh, MP4, or MP, you know, any of the kind of variants, it'll provide that one, it'll push that one out to you. So the upload form has its actions set to go directly to their servers instead of going to yours? Right, because you're paying $59.97 for them to host it. So they'll host, you know, unlimited number of videos for you, but they just, they can only be one gig. Um, uh, maximum. And it's a new service that, they, that they've just added to Jetpack just in the last like, week or so. So um, the direct upload, just like how you're asking about um, direct, uh, directly uploading your video, you actually take your video using the, the media uploader and upload that video up to the site, and it'll give you a link that you can then put into your website and it'll, and it'll display it. Don't do it if you have shared web hosting or something like that. You probably don't want to do that. Um, your audience is on YouTube. I can guarantee it. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about plugins. So I, I love plugins, and I love using um, hopefully the correct plugins. <laughs> so with, when you're doing an embed, uh, an embed, what, what ends up happening is those, uh, those videos that get uploaded uh, are rather on YouTube, and now you're going to embed it onto your website. If you're using a responsive design style um, site, um, what happens is you start shrinking down that screen. It hits the snap points and makes it smaller. Well, those videos won't scale properly. It tries to, but it, it's, it's not 100%. Um, new versions of this and new versions of that are being added to WordPress to kind of help that, so you won't have to use these plugins anymore. But the one I use the most is this responsive video embed. Um, I've kind of switched between using FitVids and using a couple other different ones. This is the one I like. We're we'll going to kind of go through that one. That one's free. Um, if you want to get the direct link to it, you can go to my website and do that. Another one's called Lead Player. Um, if you're a salesperson and you want to do a squeeze page and you want to pop up all these little you know, video uh, underlays and overlays and stuff, We'll talk about that one. And then uh, one of my new favorites now is, is uh, Foobox. And Foobox is great because it kind of does a, a pop-up in your web browser, and then you can see that video on there. And there's links for sharing and all sorts of cool stuff there. So let's kind of go through each one of those real fast. So like I said, this one's a responsive video. It's totally free. If we go over to the plugins and add a plugin. Um, I went and installed it already. Hopefully, you folks know how to install a plugin. If you don't, um, raise your hand, and I can uh, walk you through that real quick. Real quick. So now, now that we've installed it, um, if we go over to, and I'll show you a demo between having it installed and not installed. So let's de deactivate it real quick here, and I'll show you how it looks when you don't have it enabled. All right, so there's our, our O-embed videos. And as I start scaling down, you can see how it's, oh, look at him. He's going really weird. So he's kind of doing weird stuff there. So if I go in um, and turn on this plugin and go back to the page, and we'll force a refresh here. And hopefully my caching on my server doesn't Take this out. 
Yep, I need to clear my cache real fast here. I'm hosted through WP Engine, so if you've ever used WP Engine, they, they love to cache everything. Cache all the things. So now my caching is cleared out. Let's go back over here. We refresh the page. And hopefully this thing doesn't call me a liar. And things will hmm, not really scaling like it should. Let's see here. Let me make sure it's actually. Give me a moment here. Hmm. All right. Let's take a look and see what the, the deal is here. So this thing has absolutely no, um, there's no configuration to it. It should just work out of the box. And let's load up the page real fast. No. Let me try deactivating it one more time. So what this is supposed to do is it's supposed to uh, shrink, uh, shrink and grow that video so that it, um, it it looks it looks correct on your browser. You're gonna refresh. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Did you do a refresh? Yes. Yeah, it's not. Let's see here. I got really funky. All right, let's try it again. I'm using a Windows computer, and I usually use a Mac, so. <laughs> yeah, it's not doing it. I mean, it's trying, but it, it should actually scale down in height. That's okay. Um, anyhow, uh, take a look at that plugin and see if it works for you. <laughs> So let's go. Let's go through the uh, the rest of my my uh, presentation. Is that plugin pretty much being independent? It is being independent. Yeah, it is. Um, what it does is it manipulates the way that that embed works, and it puts in a couple extra CSS uh, kind of call you know setups there. Is there any settings that you can do within that plugin or within that plugin to make it respond better? That's what I was trying to. That's what I was attempting to to, to show. What one, one thing I can try real quick here is when I was setting up this thing is if I go into appearance, I was using a, another theme. This theme's kind of in beta right now, so let me um, oops, let me switch up themes real quick. I was using uh, 2013 when I was first testing this out. I thought I'd try a fancy 2014 for my oh, demo. 2014? Yeah, that's what that was. Uh, no, it's still kind of doing wonky stuff. It's trying to. You can see how it kind of jumped up a little bit. There's a few different ones out there, but this one typically works. <laughs> All right, let's go back over to um, to this this uh, this this one here. So this plugin's called uh, Lead Player, and um, I'm 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 kind of scared of these plugins, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. I'm not a salesperson, and I, um, I I I don't try to like build squeeze pages for people and get them to you know to buy something. Um, none of my you know I I just me, just me. I don't like squeeze pages all that well. And the squeeze page is one of those pages where it's like the the only destination you can get to, the only link that's going to be on there is click here to give me money. You know that's that one button on the bottom there. So the, with Lead Player, it kind of adds a couple extra little uh, little features to it. So we'll go through how Lead Player works. We go over to the pages, and um, we'll look at this particular plugin here. And then we'll go and click Edit. What this does is uh, it, adds, it uses a short code for each one of these. And it actually has its own its own little interface, because it's, it's set up for someone who um, you know, they just they just finished uh, if you're like a client of yours or something. They just they just paid you to to go and have their website built. Now they have a couple videos and they want to start putting videos on their website. And now they're looking for a way to be able to either grow their audience or to have some type of call to action that's on the link on the video, or they want to have a video that will collect email addresses. And that's what this plugin does. So if you go in here, you can kind of look at the way this is set up. You have uh, three different things up here. First one's the video. The second one is the opt-in, 
And then the third one is your call to action. So within video, you take your, your YouTube um, URL and stick it in there. And then you put your description, your video title. You can also set if it's a, six by nine, a 16 by 9 or it's 4 by 3, or if you're using some really weird aspect ratio, you can set that too. Um, then you can set whether or not it's going to be an autoplay. So some of those pages, it's like, here's your video. And there's no you know, interface for it whatsoever. And you can only hit pause, or maybe you can't even hit pause. You can kind of go through that here. So you can turn that on, either autoplay or not. If you want to make it so they can show the timeline, so they can scrub back and forth through the video. And then you can also specify what the uh, URL is for the, uh, for the uh, thumbnail, depending on how you have this configured. So what this, what this ends up doing is when we go back to the site and we'll click on the lead player, is one of these will automatically start playing. This one right here. So you can tell what it did is it, it put this little box down the bottom here saying, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you wait a couple seconds, now it's asking me, hey, put in your, you know, your, uh, uh, your uh, name and email address. And you can actually make this step optional if you want to make it so you can skip or not. So if you say, nah, it's optional. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to do that. Now you can watch the video. Um, if it was something where you didn't, you you wanted to force them to do that, or they would just leave, you know, then you can you can kind of change that configuration in here. So if you go to opt-in, you can request it to put in their their name or just grab their email address, and then whether or not you want to allow skipping or not. So if we go back to the uh, to the player here, you can see there's a couple different ones I've set up, a couple different scenarios. So I don't have to go through and configure them while, we're, while I'm talking. So this one does no opt-in, no nothing. It's literally just a YouTube video player using their technology. So there's that. And if I go down here, this one has the opt-in right at the beginning and no call to action. So now it's saying, hey, do you want to watch this or not? And if you, you know, put in the information, I can make this optional like I was showing you in the, the setup interface. And then it plays the video. Um, you can make it so that in X number of seconds, so whatever, how many seconds you want to have it set to, have that opt-in box show up. This one's set just to 10 seconds. So if we wait 10 seconds, it'll, it'll go through. And once it gets to that 10 second mark, it should do the pop-up. And then um, you can also, you know, kind of set it so that this thing shows up at the very beginning, very beginning, where it's saying, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you click on it, it takes you over to YouTube and automatically subscribes me to the YouTube video or the YouTube channel. So the configurations are in here to kind of allow, uh, allow you to set this how you want it to to look and act. Um, you have the opt-in box where you can change these. You can set what time, 10 seconds, 5 minutes, the end of the video, the beginning of the video, you know, kind of configure that. You can put what the text is going to say, you know, uh, skip this, or hey, I'll bug you next time, or whatever you want to put that in there, and then allow skipping or not. So once that's all done, um, you can even preview it just to kind of see how it's going to work for you. And it'll play the video. So. Uh, one thing you can uh, you probably noticed when I was uh, setting this up is that the the thumbnail at the beginning is kind of stretched out and elongated and weird. Um, that's because I, I was trying to be really quick at setting this up, and what I did is I just went and grabbed the uh, the YouTube um, video link or video URL for that thumbnail. So if I wanted to, I'd probably go through and crop it, or maybe even just have like you know something saying. Buy my software now. Here's how to do it. Or you're buy my plugin or buy my whatever I'm selling, and then you can kind of uh, capture that information from them. Uh, the other thing with the call to action is that you can let's see here. Yeah, right. Yeah, so that's what it is. So within the uh, within the opt-in rather. Uh, what that what that interface is doing is it's asking the person, hey, put in your first name and last name and put in the email address. Um, you can actually configure that from within here. You can create a new list. Well, I think not. 
work very well. There we go. And it supports all of these uh, list providers. So Aweber, Infusionsoft, I use MailChimp, so I selected MailChimp. And then you can create your, you know, what's the name of the list that you're going to be connecting to, and then it asks you to paste in the form embed code. So you go onto MailChimp or eWeber or whatever, just get the raw HTML code and stick it in there. And this thing's smart enough to know, you know, MailChimp asks for first name, last name, email address, the other one does you know, some other format. So once you do that and you go in uh, and actually watch one of these videos and then do that often, it will, um, we wait the 10 seconds here, um, the, the box will come up and then they'll ask me, you know, uh, put in your, your information. So we'll put in my name real quick. And then I'll hit play. Oh. And now let me continue playing. So it's like it's like pay to play kind of thing, you know. Give me your email address and I'll let you finish the rest of it. So there that's that setup. So that's using Lead Player. Um, the next one is called FooBox. Uh, FooBox is one of those um, one of those boxes where it'll, it'll pop up on the web page. What's, what's it called? A you talk. Uh, what's what? It's a modal. Modal. That's it. I always want to say module or something. Modal. Yeah. It's one of those modal pop-ups. So um, FooBox is uh, is is a great it's a great product for twenty seven bucks for one site. It's great if you're a developer. Ninety seven bucks gets you uh, quite a bit of access to it. Uh, if we go over to uh, FooBox um, demo, I'll kind of show you how that works. So what this does is when you click on this link, it pops up your video. So now I'm not, I'm not showing this huge video thing on here. I'm actually just showing this one little pop-up that comes up. This thing's highly configurable. Mm -hmm. So if we go over to the settings, and um, this one's actually, it's one of those it's one of those plugins that I've seen so far that it's kind of a global, um, a globally edited um, plugin. So it, it, once you change it for one of these, it's going to change it for all of them. There are some ways to kind of do it for each one, but I, I'm not going to go through those because they're, um, for one, I'm, I'm not fully versed in it yet. But from what the developer says, you can do that. So you can set up the either metro or round. Uh, what do you want the color scheme to look like? And I'm going to kind of go really weird here just to see what it does once we set this up. Um, do you want to have show a video caption? Do you want to override the title and maybe have it say something else? Do you want to prettyify any of them that have weird dashes in it? Go over to functions. You can make it so it fits the whole screen. Um, do you want to have navigation? So this thing is not just for video. You can actually use this for a gallery. So if you have a photo gallery with all of your photos on there and you click on one of the photos, it'll let you skip through all those photos by hitting left and right or using the navigation on there. Um, there's a, a, a show a full screen button. There's um, show the actual counter if you're going through multiple videos or multiple photos. We only have one in this, this demo. And then this is the part that I liked a lot. Um, I'm a big social person, so being able to sh share this stuff and have people share my stuff on my website while they're watching it in one of these is really great. So if I turn this on and then tell it to, um, to share these, what will end up happening, it, what will end up happening here is I can enable, um, say, Facebook, Google+, Pinterest, we we'll just kind of go through here and turn on a few of these, just to see what happens here. Okay, so we've got a few of these enabled, and maybe even do email if you want, or download that particular photo, or I don't think it works with video. But then once you hit save, we'll go back to the Foo Box uh, setup here, and refresh it. Do it one more time since I caught it right as it was saving. Well, that didn't work. Let's see here. Try that one more time. Did it load all the way? There we go. So now I have a weird blue background. I have my social share boxes up here. 
and I have my interface down here from YouTube, and then I have it full screen like I asked it to. So you can kind of go through and change the way that this look and feel is going to be to kind of match up the, you know, the, the way that you want things to look. So let's go and save this one more time. And then we'll go back over to functions, and we'll turn off this fit the screen. We'll hit save. Go back to Foobox. So you know, with YouTube videos, to get someone to, to share it, typically what they have to do is find that little box that's in the bottom right-hand corner, and then click on you know, one of these things down here, or go to the actual video, or click on this one up here to get to it. Now I can tell them I'm only on Facebook and Twitter, or maybe I want them to go to the ones that I'm not you know, interacting with. So if I go on Facebook, it'll share it, go on Facebook, and then let me share that, that video. And what's nice about this is when I'm sharing this, I'm sharing the, the page that it's on so that when they go to it, they'll be able to actually interact with that particular post and be able to see the video themselves. So that's Foobox. So let's go through one more here. Oops. So um, I'm going to stretch my legs. So, uh, what we're doing right now is we're actually streaming this thing live using Google Hangout. Um, Google Hangout's one of those uh, one of those great things that kind of Google's come up with that lets me take a video straight from my camera set up here and then push it out to um, to, you, to YouTube directly. So someone can watch it if they go on to YouTube and like for instance they went to the um, IE WordPress uh, page on uh, YouTube, they'd actually be able to watch this live from there. Uh, if they want to ask questions, they could actually go and ask questions on there, and I'd get a nice little interface on the right hand side of my uh, my laptop here that would tell me that I'm um, that I have a question. So if you look here, you can see that the um, this is a, a custom interface that I'm using to have this displayed. But what it's doing is it's it's taking this video that we're recording off of here and pushing it out to YouTube. And then that URL that's on YouTube can be shared with people. They can share it on Facebook, they can share it on Twitter, they can share it on all those things like we did when we first started presenting here. So what's what's nice about, about Google Hangout, and if you go on my website, um, wpmedia.pro, I have a lot of articles on how to do this, what's the right way to do it, what are the features, what's the, um, what are the, some of the things that you should look for when you're setting one of these up? There's two different kinds of Hangouts. There's a Google Hangout and there's Google Hangout on Air. And right now I just got a question coming. Yeah. So um, Google Hangout on Air is the one that streams straight to YouTube. Um, Google Hangout is just you interacting with someone else. They're not, um, uh, or multiple people, like for instance on WP Water Cooler, um, we have 10 people that are on there for Google Hangout on air. Um, for just normal Google Hangouts, it's just let's kind of do a Skype conversation, get everyone on there and start talking. Um, totally free. Doesn't cost anything. Google makes their money off the ads on YouTube and all the other things that they make money off of. Um, the other thing is, uh, is live stream. You go to livestream.com. Um, they have a free version for kind of a trial. I think you can only have four or five people on, to, on the live stream. You can do 49, 399, 99, and there's even higher ones up as well. And then there's uh, Ustream TV. Their pans are somewhere between 99 and 1000 um, bucks. I'm going to show you one that we use at our church real quick here, which is a uh, live stream. All right, so we're on the, uh, the website. We'll go take a look at the live stream services page. And on our live stream services page, we actually get a, um, an embed link. Uh, you can use the OEmbed on this, and it'll, it'll display this as well. And what this does is it, um, it lets us look at the, uh, the different, um, different video posts that we've done in the past. So you can see. Uh, 
you know, that like for instance, this particular sermon, we can click on it and watch that sermon, you know, straight from here. Um, the if we go over to you know the say like this one up on the top here. You can watch one of these videos as well, and you know, it'll play it. Um, so what we're doing with 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 this using this technology is you know we have a full production you know studio like most of like the mega churches and the larger churches use. Smaller churches are using uh, you know, cameras like we're using here, maybe like a you know a nice studio camera and maybe some really simple software or something like that. Um, when you're when you're taking this, what you're doing is you're taking that video stream from that interface and then piping it in to a, a source that will then push it out to live stream. Um, one of the things I'm, I use to do this, and this is just my personal stuff, is I use this, and I want to be very careful with it because I don't want to um, disconnect us, but I use this, uh, this USB to VGA adapter, or rather VGA to USB adapter. And what it does is it takes the... Um, the output from uh, your computer and put and makes it uh, presents itself to the computer as a webcam. So what we're doing here is um, I have my screen on one of my computers here going out to our projector. The projector is displaying it on the screen here. We have a splitter, which uh, in this case on this particular model actually has an output that comes out that then is then going down into the VGA USB adapter and then being presented as a webcam onto this computer here. So it sounds like it's a lot of stuff, but it's actually really, really simple, because you're just taking an output from one thing and turning it into a webcam and putting it into another thing. The way I'm doing it here is using Google Hangout, but you could use Livestream to do the exact same setup. So we'll go out of here. And if you have any questions whatsoever while I'm talking my head off, feel free to. I have a viewer question. OK, please. Mark is asking, he is uploading a video, which he said not to do, but he has no choice. This is what the client has requested. It's only one video. But the issue, remember right, but that's, that's right. right. <laughs> the issue is it's a large file, so he can't send it to the media. Uh -huh. the uploader. So he's FTP'd it in place. Sure. Is there a plugin that's going to allow him to embed this so that it's viewable online? Hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, he could take that video and just put in the embed. Well, you I mean, can do an embed through it, but I guess you could build out the actual object embed. You know, that whole kind of container and then container, the container within a container, and then put the link you know, to wherever it is. Mm -hmm. If he's put it into WP content slash upload slash wherever, right? Exactly. And that would that would be that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that would be. I mean, the reason why you would use some other, you know, some other software, some other, you know, web hosted solution is because you know they're going to do flash fallback, they're going to do this, they're going to do all these other things. Right. Um, what Mark's going to end up having to do is that exact same thing. So they'll have to use some type of program to encode that video, say, two or three times over, and then put them in there. Well, the, other, the other thing he can do... plug in there. Yeah. Right. The yeah. other thing he can do is if he... Let's say, perfect world, everyone's using HTML5. Yeah. You can just use an HTML5 uh, video um, mm -hmm. tag. Yeah, yeah it's a link tag okay. for it. And then you can put in your fallbacks for all the other ones that are on there. So I, I figure what the what the parameters are, but that's how we would do that. Okay. Might have to write a short code a little bit to do to do that. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some that already exist that do it, so it is definitely possible. Any other questions? Okay. So um, I already kind of talked about Google Hangout on Air and how that part of it works. We talked a little bit about live stream, how that works. That's about it in terms of you know, the way uh, using video on WordPress. Um, really, what it comes down to now is using an OEMBED. You know, taking that video, putting it onto YouTube, put it onto Vimeo, and then kind of expanding it out from there. If you want to learn more about using it with Vimeo, I've done some tutorials on how that stuff works. Totally free on my website. Just go check it out. So I'm not trying to make any money off the site. It's more about kind of spreading how to use video on WordPress. Um, let me see if there's a question here, and maybe I can answer it real fast. And there, didn't you have a question in 2008? 
Some guys said it works great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. Um, I posted things yesterday. I was wondering what theme. Like, let's say we have a theme of the gallery. So yeah. Not not shopping cart. That would be fun. Just uh, products, pictures, and I want to have videos on some of them. So, are there some galleries that would be less suited to doing that than others, or? Mm. So, like, other than using like just a standard WordPress gallery, or are you using? Um, I I've been using one of the Woo themes. Um, I can play that over in a few minutes, but um, but I've noticed that some of the galleries resize the pictures and some don't. I'm kind of wondering if, if the same thing is going to be an issue with videos or with people. Yeah, the I mean the container that the you know whatever the width of the div, however that's set, um, I'd imagine it's either fixed width or it's using percentage or ends ends or something like that. Um, that video is going to expand and stay into that you know that container. Is when using LMBed. Especially if you use one of those plugins that didn't work that I was showing you earlier, that would do it as well. Um, you could also have, I've done it where on an e-commerce site, you have the photo of the, of the thing so that way everything is consistent. You have all the nice clean photos. And if they click on one of the, the items, they want to see the description. You can put the OMBed link to it, you know, that video link, in there. And then have that be displayed in the description of it. And not only that, you can add a plugin to add another tab that you could call video and do exactly the same thing. Oh yeah, thing. yeah. So you know how you've got the tabs at the bottom, mm -hmm. one being description, mm -hmm. the other one could be the next one could be video. Exactly. Yeah. And the, and you know, video, especially if you're hosting it through YouTube, it's it's great. Um, it's you know totally free and all that, but free comes at a cost in that they're going to put ads on the bottom. Of it. If you went through like um, like a video press, for instance, no ads, none of that stuff, nice clean interface, and you'd be able to watch it from there. Um, the other thing you could use is Vimeo, which I didn't I didn't kind of uh, go through here, but Vimeo lets you do um, you can make it so the video will only display on your website and will display on any other website. You just specify all the websites you're going to use with that video. You're good to go there. Um, Another thing as far as you can turn off the relative videos at the end. Yes. By doing the O embed, and then at the end, half percent rel equals mm -hmm. zero, right? Yeah, and there's actually um, there's some code that I found recently that will kind of uh, do a filter off of that off of the O embed and add you know force HD quality, remove the relevant videos, try to you know cut down all of the you know the crop that that YouTube puts on their videos. And that's just like drop that into your functions.php file and it takes care of the rest for you. Cool. So I'll, I'll share that on my site so you can take a look at that, that link. Uh, if you go over to wpmedia.pro slash IEWP video, that's the that's my link for this. So if you take that, take a look at that, I just wpmedia.pro that would be the most the most recent one. Yeah, do you have a question? Um, just out of curiosity, one of the I was wondering if there's a program or anything that you're aware of. Um, I know a bond is kind of expensive. Um, where you can do a um, capture a full room, mm -hmm. so you do a 360 in a room, and then like you're going to go down a hall inside the video mm -hmm. of the room. It will have a little arrow so people can actually point and it's like walking through. Do you have any recommendations? Foundations or some ideas for me to take a look at for something like that because I want to kind of like get ideas. Is this um, is this like a public space or is it a private space? Well, it'd be a video tour of the house, so if you go into ah, okay. you want to get as many people into gotcha. it as possible. Okay, well, um, let me talk about public space first, and then I can kind of circle back to the private space. Okay. So, um, utilizing Google again, um, let me kind of. Yeah, so utilizing Google, if we were to go to um, maps.google.com and we look at a particular location over here somewhere, um, you know, just using Google Street View, uh, Google Street View actually does um, in uh, in store 
Street View stuff yeah, now. Yeah. Right. And so what they do is they go, uh, I was going to show you Google Street View, but I think about pretty much everybody has yeah, seen that. <laughs> but but what's, what's neat about it is they have contractors that they go through now, or rather people that have been certified to do this sort of thing. Um, they've actually approached us at our church and said, hey, could we, you know, for 100 bucks a shot, a shot being a full 360 panoramic, they'll go through from the street, walk their way through to that location where you want to actually get the full shot. And it, they'll do, for 100 bucks a pop, go through and take all those photos. And they'll, they'll do all the managing of it, the compiling all of the photos and sticking it on there. And then now you just have a nice embed that you can put onto your site. And they can do a full 360 to do all the treatment for the photos and everything. Uh, if you want to do it kind of on the cheap, there's a lot of apps for the iPhone that will do that sort of thing. Um, there's even one where you'll just stick it on the table and hit the button, and the thing will just vibrate and rotate. Right. I, I know how to capture the video. Right. What I don't know is how to get it, once you get that room, mm -hmm. that you're going into another room, and indicate it to other people. That's the piece I need. Gotcha. Um, now I don't have a solution for you like off the top of my head. Okay. Um, I have seen some that will do the panoramic as an happen? embed, but nothing that will then allow you to navigate over. Right, because you wanted to go down the hallway and air right. and stuff. And I, I know of one program, but I was looking for other mm -hmm. options. I'd imagine there has to be somebody out there that's doing that. That would give you an embed. Most likely, it'll charge you for it. But it's got to be like Shockwave or Flash or something. It's not that straight video because it's um, it's interactive. Mm -hmm. You know, quit say about oh eight years ago. Maybe 10 years ago, they had QuickTime VR, and so you could actually, you know, take a picture, full 360, you know, video or a picture of it, and then you can click in the interface and walk through it. But it required, you know, an object and an embed for that QuickTime. That, this is a weak solution to to what she's sure. talking to, but up on Code Canyon there is something that does hotspots, mm. and that okay. would do kind of what she's describing, but mm -hmm. on the cheap. Yeah, but yeah. Not, it's not like a like a yeah, to be interactive. It's, it's like an image map for video. Is <laughs> yeah. where do you go for hotspots? Code yeah. Code Canyon. C O D E Canyon. Yes. Thank you. Oh, okay, Jason, um, the OMED page that you had in your in your WordPress is that. Was that set up as a special type of page, or is that just a new page? That's just a page. Normal page, nothing special on it. It's actually a page that just has one line, which is just the, the link to the, the YouTube link. That's not a plugin or anything. Right? No, no plugin or nothing. That's baked into WordPress. And if you like, I say, if you go to the codex, you can kind of look at the way that's that's set up. And like I was describing to Greg, that you can actually use um, filters and hooks to kind of tie into that and uh, manipulate it up, uh, as you need to. Um, I've seen them where you know you do a mouse over and it goes from black to white to color. Or I've seen yeah, a couple of different things like that where it just uses either some uh, jQuery or JavaScript and then kind of swaps between two different embeds. Question. Yeah. Uh, so so as as you're like let's say I'm building a custom theme mm -hmm. and uh, I'm I'm not sure right now, right now off the top of my head I've probably done this before but. If I actually add the YouTube link inside of the you know, template file, mm -hmm. would it own that pick it up? No. Oh, okay. there, but there is um, there is a way to do a there's a there's a function that you can use to kick off an own bed. Really? I oh, don't recall it, but I've done it before, but I don't recall what it is. Same with, same with, it's in the same uh, tune as um, kicking off a, a, short code. a short code from a function. Yeah. Or sorry, from key, well, PHP. I think I was trying to do like do short code, open the uh, that, that wasn't working. Yeah. I think I may have figured it out. You know? Now, one thing about Ombed that I didn't mention and I kind of skipped over and I've, I've done my face a few times because of this too. I'm just like, why isn't this thing working? It should work. It can't be a link. So you can't use uh, an href around it. If you do that, it won't work. I have the same problem. Yeah. <laughs> so as long as you don't put a link in there, you're fine. As soon as you turn it you know, turn to raw text, it detects it and then does it. And it's got to be on its own line. In its own line. Just yep. By itself. Yeah. 
But it, it, it works great where if you wanted to have, like, if you use CSS columns or something like that, you could have a, a bunch of videos here and a bunch of videos here. And as long as we're on the same, you know, on separate lines, everything will work out OK. Um, but yeah, OwnBid, I mean, there, there's quite a bit you can do with it. And uh, they keep adding more and more sites. They keep adding more and more sites to it. You know? It's like, uh, buddy or die. OK, let's stick that one on there, because we know how to you know, manipulate that a bit. Any other questions or anything? No? All right, cool. I'm done. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. No problem. So, I guess, well, it's only 8 o'clock. Does anybody have questions that are not regarding video or just miscellaneous questions? Your WordPress question. You know? <laughs> I thought it was running long. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. I mean, like, actually, we, we just have time now just to kind of um, go over any anything that. It's miscellaneous, and if not, you know, then just network and talk to each other for a little bit. Okay. How many of you have used Google Glass before? Have you, anybody, maybe I can kind of show that a little bit. Okay. Um, there's. Uh, let me see if I can get that to display on here. Let me see. No, I won't be able to. We can, we can. I can show you it if you guys are interested in playing around with it. I can hand it around. And, Add up to my number of people that had this thing. Did you just create a thing on their plugin Facebook? that goes with Google Glass? So. We did create a plugin for Google Glass, yeah. But it, kind of work. it um what happens is you take a excuse me, we take a picture with Google Glass, there's an action that you can do with it. Well, there's also these things that you can do with it where when you um, when you're flipping through it, I wish I could show it on the screen here, but when you're flipping through uh, the, the main interface. There's a way to interact with new what they call bundles that come in. So what ends up happening is um, a bundle comes from the API called Mirror API. And what we did is we created a plugin that will take any of the comments that come into your WordPress site and will bundle them up and then send them to your Google Glass. And then from there you can moderate it. So you can actually moderate comments from your head, which is pretty funny. <laughs> so you know, like trash, trash, spam, spam reply, and then you talk. You wow. just talk to your reply. And then when you're done, you hit the button, and then you can just go through them all. So if you have a whole lot of you know, comments and you want to moderate through your head, <laughs> then you can do that. Um, we, did, we haven't posted on to uh, like the plugin repository or anything like that, but it's on GitHub. Um, it's only like a handful of plugins that are out there right now for, for WordPress that work with Google Glass. Oh. So see me after, but have you and feel free to play with it. I saw you posted a, uh, a plugin earlier. What do they call it? Rocketeer? Yeah. 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 For Jetpack? For Jetpack, yeah. That's a that's a thing for um, I think it's for managing the modules that are enabled. Yeah. So you can actually delete them or, or just turn them off. Yeah, because in you know, in um, I'll show you on here. And there's already mixed reviews on it. <laughs> because of, course. of the method they use to do what they're doing, it can um, cause some issues. Um, so it's kind of like scrap code or the way they're reaching in and messing with Jetpack and the way they're doing it. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know how many of you have actually used Jetpack, but. Um, on WP Water Cooler this week, we discussed Jetpack with the developers of Jetpack, and we kind of told them in their face that you know this thing takes over the whole interface. Oh, dude, yeah, you know, uh, it was it was it was pretty funny. They were they're like, no, it doesn't. Look, it only changes this one screen, you know, with all of this stuff. But what it what it does is, you know, every time if this thing's disconnected and it wants you to connect. Um, I think it's just about every page. It'll put a thing up on the top here saying "Enable Jetpack, Enable yeah. Jetpack." So um, some of the plugins for that are kind of uh, for Jetpack. Um, if we go over here and add one. There's one from. Um, let's see here. Where's that? 
I mean, there's a there's a few of them that kind of uh, interact with it, and there's also all of the plugins that are in Jetpack are separate plugins as well. So if you didn't want to install, say, for, say if you wanted to use Omni Omni Search from Jetpack, but you don't want to install Jetpack, yeah. you could actually enable that one, and it will just use just Jetpack by itself. Um, but one of the things we were talking about is like Slim um, Slim Jetpack, I think it's called, or Tiny Jetpack. I forget the name of it. Um, that thing, it's kind of like a fork of it, so it, they kind of made it not so heavy, yet you still get the features from it, but it's usually kind of a, you know, behind a little bit. Um, Mark J. Cliff made one. Okay. What's it called? Yeah. We don't have our show notes done yet for water cooler yet, so I don't have it. Okay. But anyhow, yeah, there, there's a plugin that um, controls, uh, I think it's Jetpack Controller. I think. Yeah, there's Slim Jetpack. That's the one I was, I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, marker here. So this one's manual controller for Jetpack. When you enable this one, <coughs> What it does is it, it stops Jetpack from automatically um, installing new modules like it added. Uh -huh. So some of those modules are kind of set to auto um, activate when they okay. get downloaded. So if a new version of Jetpack comes out or they push out a new module, then it'll stop it from, from doing that. So that's a good one to install if you're looking to do that sort of thing. Um, there's also, you said Rocketeer was the other? Yeah, Rocketeer. Oh, you know, that's the one you posted earlier. It's not even in the repository. Yeah, that's probably the, why, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the one that's uh, it's yeah. on GitHub, but it, it, it hasn't been posted to the repository. Yeah, I, I, you know, after the show, I started doing more research because there's no reason to research before the show because yeah. I don't want to make it look like I know what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> <laughs> so do after the show and say, oh, okay. Yeah, Rocketeer was one of them. There's a few other ones that kind of do that sculpting of the animal that's called Jetpack, because you know Jetpack has just ridiculous amount of um, of power to it. Yeah, like there one are of the ones, some really cool things. Like the newest one was the the monitor. Now that okay. is pretty cool. The which one? The the new monitor where it'll actually keep an eye on your website. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll notify yeah. you. I that's mean, really there's cool. there's other tools out on the web that you can use, but this is kind of cool. It's built in. And it's built in WordPress. They yeah, said this one. They said this one is like one of the most popular ones that's installed. Which what is, is it? What is it again? It's it allows you to connect to um, or interact with WordPress through JSON. So any of the objects that come out of that, you're able to interact with those, ask it for more, or do callbacks, that sort of thing. So you can use the JSON API. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, so you can practically build your web application. Yeah, yeah, through that. Yeah, there. Um, there's the, the other one that that we talked about on there is this one called Photon. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Photon is pretty neat because what it does is when you upload a when you upload a new image to your website, um, what it'll do is it'll send it over to um, to WordPress.com and it'll do the resizing for you. So you're not doing the resizing on your website. You're actually telling WordPress.com to do the resizing. And it does the image manipulation. There's all sorts of really cool stuff that you can do with it. Yeah, does it just do resizing? <laughs> no, no. There's there's other things that you can interact with it too. Um, but yeah, it does all the caching. It's pretty much just like a CDN okay. for your images. Yeah, so it does all the hosting and everything through that. Um, yeah, here's that monitor one. I'm gonna go back and that. So one of the one of the things that I noticed while we were talking about the monitor, uh, the the monitor thing, is that what this does is it checks to see um, if every you know if 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 the site's still up or not. So it's using it's using WordPress.com to pretty much do like uh, there's you know those monitoring like ping, ping dome or something like that. Yeah. Right, exactly. But every five minutes or an hour. The offshoot of it that I thought was funny, I kind of use as a as a joke device, but what you can do with it is, um, if you have a website that just doesn't get a lot of traffic, 
Yeah. Every five minutes, this thing's hitting your website. Ah. So that would make it so that that yeah. um, yeah. make it so that no, no, it doesn't do any like traffic stuff for your site. But what it does is it'll allow you to do um, uh, WP uh, uh, cron oh. cron with it. So like if you have a site like you know your favorite cat's website, only you and your cat are gonna go to that site, and that's it. No, it, those WP crons will never get kicked off. Yeah. Where um, you know there's there's tons of things that could be happening on your site that would use WP cron. There's there's things as soon as you enable your, uh, for instance, like looking at um, like new updates for your plugins uses yeah. WP cron to do that. So you know using this monitor tool will then just keep pinging your site, checking to see if it's up, and then also enabling you know turning on WordPress and having it kind of run through all the code nice. and keeping uh, WP cron working. Um, yeah, I mean, there's tons of really cool stuff that's in here. If you, the one that I use the most out of out of anything is uh, the one where it publicizes. This one right here. Right. This one's pretty sweet. Um, my only complaint about it was that it doesn't work with custom post types. Mm -hmm. So if you have a custom post type, for instance, at my church, my work, um, we have a custom post type for sermons. And when we add a new sermon, I'd love this thing to kick off and say, hey, Twitter, hey, Facebook, hey, Google Plus Path, whatever, whatever we're using it for. Go out there and say, hey, we have a new post that just came out. Mm -hmm. There's other ways to do it, but yeah. it's just kind of cool to let you know Jetpack do it for you. But by far, like the, 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 the feature that we really liked the most was um, the WordPress.com stats. Oh, yeah. that, that thing's pretty. Pretty cool. If you don't use Google Analytics, which I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you wanted to have just like simple stats showing up on your dashboard, that's the one to enable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. So how many how many people in here have ever built a WordPress website just by show of hands? <laughs> okay. How many people have built a WordPress website? Okay, I'll put on a little more. Okay. Um, are you guys like custom themes or, or, or just customizing the theme? From what angle are you, are you building a website? Who's starting? Thesis? Thesis, okay. Who else? Oh, yeah, I have a few more things. Bring in the thing and Let's go on. Benjamin Bill is a great thing. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing your clients here, awesome. <laughs> clients actually know quite a bit. I just wanted to make sure I. Go work. Go work. Manager. Go work. Clients are great. <laughs> we have great. You do all types of things. All kinds of things. <laughs> I'm playing with a theme right now, too. Oh, just seeing how it works, human thread and um, photography. And I'm just seeing how what I'm doing, I'm just trying to break it apart. But I learned from Jason last week that the way they said it on WordPress themes is that you don't necessarily want to break it apart because you want to use it how they intend it to be used. Mm -hmm. And it's more how to put that information in there, which I was misguided in my own head, thinking that I could just break this apart and make it how exactly how I want to start putting the links. And it's showing that this particular um, theme required me to do this certain thing. Mm -hmm. So anytime I was trying to edit something, I kept reverting back to the same thing. And then when I went to editing, it said, do not edit anything on this, so it's going to revert to what it was before. And like a dummy, I kept doing that without reading the print. So uh, I think you're supposed to use what's, what's there for now, and then once I, you know, I think, once I get comfortable with that, then I can build my own from pieces. But I was missing that little key component. And it's built for a reason already. Just want to report information, and that's what you're trying to tell me. Nice. I was trying to skip over that. So late at night, I was playing with it. Man, this kind of reminds me of MySpace, but it doesn't let me break it apart. <laughs> <laughs> like what's the issue with you? Well, everything's already built, so it's just asking you to use it, not to break it right now. Are you are you familiar with like HTML, CSS, PHP? I'm familiar now because of him. Okay. So I'm okay. familiar with it, so more I spend time with him, the more I get familiar with the idea. So. Nice. He's kind of forced to, so <laughs> <laughs> which is a good one. <laughs> yeah. Cool. 
Yeah, if you go to the other one, that, that won't be. Yeah, So you want to learn about plugins? There's everything about plugins. Documentation for building themes, building plugins. 
Here's your set of themes. It could be overwhelming, but but you don't have to go through everything. I would go through a guided tutorial first, and then as you're building out your website, do searches in the code. Okay. Thank you. No problem. I've got a question. I've got a client that wants uh, a site. It's kind of a private site for his business. Uh, he's a distributor, and he wants to have um, let his, let his uh, manufacturers or vendors log in. Or people make the products log in, and then people that sell the products, so the retailers, they're going to log in. And he wants the manufacturers to upload pictures and videos, and he wants the retailers to be able to view those and rate them, give, give them like a, a rating or mm. review. So first question would be, what would be the best way to manage two groups of users like that? Would, would, um, would you create a new, a new user type, and then give the, you know, the ones that would be doing the uploading would be good, basically a um, contributor or something, and the, the other ones that the, the retailers would just have a login and uh, just plug in or something so they could do it. Yeah. Um, is that yeah, I mean, there's there's plugins for um, for creating custom roles. So that's kind of what you're talking about is using custom roles. So yeah, if you did a, a, a to start, I mean, that's not going to solve all of those, you know, the Facebook that you're trying to build, but yeah, <laughs> but to start, yeah, the, to, the starting point of it of just maintaining that stuff, and yeah, using a like role shaper, there's a whole bunch of these different role editor editors that you can do, and then from there you can just say this person can create a post, this person can't do this, this person can use a custom post type, they can only use this custom post type, they can only create one, they can't delete it, they can't delete their own, all these different pieces that you can do. It from there, it's like you know creating either. They're going to live in the back end where I've seen some sites where the friends like WP maintain, WP maintain WP, that one's like you're pretty much living in their dashboard at that point. Um, so yeah, there's all different ways of kind of building that out. And if you want them to do it on the front end or on the back end and how you're going to manage that. Um, but really it sounds like you're building kind of a, like two pieces to it. You know, one being a membership site. There's plenty of membership you know, plugins for that. Yeah. I've worked with Pedro, which is pro, but in this case, it, no one used to pay anything, so I just need mm. some, some way of managing memberships and keeping the general public from viewing everything. And they might not mind with public view, view things, but I need to talk to you some more about it. Um, I would say my suggestion about uh, members is really nice. Yeah, I agree yeah, with really school. Cool. Members is really, it's really yeah. basic. It's like a membership site. It doesn't worry about the process. Oh, yeah. uh, you can create goals in there. You can say if these members have access to these pages, or they have access to upload photos, edit photos, things like that. Um, and uh, yeah, so I would suggest members because they allow page control. Very well. Where do you find that members at? It's on uh, it's on the plugin repository. Yeah. Okay. This guy right here. And the um, the thing I was asking earlier about the themes um, and, and the portfolio or gallery. Uh, uh, one of my clients, I, I've done a, a spec site for him already, and I'm using the um, simplicity thing from the things. And it, um, it has this gallery or portfolio, and it's a little frustrating because the sizes really jump around. Like, if you don't have things yeah. the same um, size, then the page jumps around. But, I think with video that might be kind of difficult because you can't you can't really I mean you can put content on the page but the the images get uploaded as um, as a portfolio image which is yeah a custom part of the theme. What I've done for that at least for that part of it is create a there's some plugins that'll create a secondary um, featured image. And then you can use that secondary featured image and tell it to do a hard crop of that image, and then it'll always be the exact same, you know, look and feel to it. Um, if you know, and with that, I mean, there's there's a lot of debate over, you know, should you be doing hard cropping and how do you control hard cropping? If it has text in it, it's going to crop out some of the text and you have all those weird issues. I mean, really, it comes down to like educating your user and just saying, 
you know, if you're going to upload an image, it needs to be this size at this aspect ratio and, and upload it. And yeah, well, I'm okay. With, I'm okay. With, that's what I'm hearing. I'm just trying to get the same width. But, um, but how would you get a video onto, onto a gallery like this? Because another problem with this page is if you click on an image, it gives you a pop-up command. Right. And that's like what I showed you with that with that one plugin is it does the exact same thing. There's color box, there's it's a light box, it just pops up. And the way that those light boxes work is they usually have like a rail tag that's in the in the image or in the, the link. And when they click on it, instead of it going to that link or that image, it will then kick off the light box. So to to do it for video, you're kind of you're kinda having those images would be the image, and then when they click on it, have like you know like like um, the um, the foo box have that thing pop up with the video in it so you could have like an image in there that just has the thumbnail maybe with like a you know the, the mm. like an arrow or something to show it's a play button but when they click on it have it actually pop up with and both the box so you have images and videos in mm -hmm. the same gallery yep okay. now what if you think it would work with a thing like this or would it pretty much just be a separate page or you could add the template. Yeah. You could create a new template. And you can take that template. No matter what, make sure you're, you know, doing that as a child theme, just yeah, so you're, yeah. yeah, covering your bases there. Yeah, I don't know what that problem is. Yeah, well, some themes don't work when you make child theme, but and and a lot of themes don't work when you do child themes in a multi-site. <laughs> That's when you really shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah. <laughs> We are we have a multi site site and we're trying to get a search functionality that really filters it accurately. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if anyone has found anything that does that. We purchased Relevancy uh -huh. and it you know works across the multi site site and they say the filter doesn't work. It doesn't work. So just forget, you know, trying to provide any so you, are you trying to make that? Are you trying to make like a, a, a search that's just for one subsite, or are you trying to make it so it just does all all of them? Yeah. There's one that's for WPMU that that they that uses that does multi, that does multi-site search through all of them, um, but it doesn't work. I don't think it works with, with relevancy. It's you know it's its own thing. Right, and we're really we're to give up relevancy. What we're doing right now is we think WPMUs and partner out there for these to do custom searches so mm -hmm. you know, giving options for what to search for. Which is, you know, one way to go, but it would be nice if you put in special ed on where this page you would get everything but special ed on the extent. Also when you get a chance to look up search WPs and see if it's multi-site. Isn't that a new one? Yeah. yeah. The, the I, search, I love it. Search WP is amazing. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know, know if it's multi-site. Yeah, it was like it's both record. Let's try that again. Well, I'm typing for half. Was this the one that said it's the best <laughs> WordPress search? It is so far wow. because you can actually weight it. Oh, okay. which is what you're you were right. describing. Right, so you can, but not across. Yep, does multi-site. I love it. Okay. I love, I love the heck out of it. I've been using it on so site for it. and it's it's very good. It looks to everything. Huh. What, um, Custom post X, everything. Is. everything. That's pretty cool. Does that just, just, just search the MySQL database or does it build a search? It builds an index. It creates a, a table in the MySQL database and then it writes it, it updates the index. Nice. And the newest release, he's and he sped up that indexing mm. process because he keeps trying to improve that because of course that's what takes the longest really yeah. is yeah. building an index, and uh, he keeps build, building that, and improving on that. This is Relevancy's direct competitor. Is, is oh. this. yeah, and it's got BB Press integration, and then there's another plugin that ties right into this called um, Facet. And with Facet, you can go in and build these pieces. That search very specific uh, taxonomies and, and things like that. Which wow. Right, which is basically what we're doing with So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, when did this come out? For 24 it's bucks, you get an entire year. year. Wow. Now, it hasn't gotten, this last six months is when it's gotten really improved.
I like that they put supported installations, not supported sites. Because <laughs> as your multi-site gets big, then you know they assume that you're. So it sounds like what this you're doing with this is when you install it, you're doing a, like a, a global um, index. It, no, no, sorry. It, um, you're activating it globally for the whole, all the multi-site instead of for each of the subsites. That's pretty cool. Twenty-four bucks. I'm using Relevancy. I'm having the same kind of issues that you're having, but because I, I have. Huh? It's not just me. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Go to beta.serverpress.com. <coughs> yeah, so there's a few of them out there that seem like the indexing is offsite. Like it seems like they would build up the index offsite. So yeah. it's like Google search, but like it's almost just like an iPhone. Yeah. Click on the, click on the, the uh, magnifying glass in the top corner. Dude, that's beautiful. And okay. if you type in, let's say, WP Engine, and don't hit enter, just type it. It starts searching and it'll actually see it shows posts. Now type in um, type in deploy. Oh, do you want me to continue with the engine or there? Oh, okay. See how it's what it's doing is it's actually grouping posts are your posts. Documents is a custom post type that I've developed, and you can see it's actually nice. searching that too. And you can see oh. how it does it, or it is automatically separated. I believe you can partly choose that. There, there is an interface where you can choose what's getting searched. Yeah. So you can actually say, I don't want to search this, or I do want to search that. Right. Now, if you go look up facets, um, Where's the search? this is search WP, hmm. right? Yeah. That's nice. Oh, wow. OK. So this is. Facet, which works with, you have to have search WP to be able to use Facet. But That's you can pretty see, correct. Yeah. Look, look at the, the searching you can do over there on the right. Oh. And as it checks, it's product. dynamic, it's Ajaxing. Yeah. Sounds like a product filter. Yeah, you could do oh, product filtering with this. Yeah. So it's all just jQuery? Yeah, yeah. yeah. just Ajaxing. Quite jQuery. Quite and jQuery. Quite and quite jQuery. I didn't practice seeing what Steve does. <laughs> Jason, have you learned never to answer when he says, what do you want to do on this next week's presentation? The moment you do, it's like, oh, you're doing it. <laughs> like, I know podcasting, the whole room looks at me like, I don't want to learn podcasting. Right <laughs> Fine. Uh, see, what you should do is you should go on there and just uh, do puppet shows and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> that way, that I don't get ideas. That's what you hear from them. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, this is pretty neat. Is this is this is this free too? No, no it's okay. it's a purchase. Twenty nine bucks. That's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah, there's there was another one. I think the WPMU one or one of the ones mobile site search. Uh, I was researching and it was some security yeah. concerns. Oh really? Um, yeah. Hmm. With WPMU. Should I stop the stream? Oops. That's cool. But yeah, so I don't know if they solved that, but that was one of the things that was turning me away from it. Because um, mm. of those concerns. So. The only thing I am using from WPMU that I really like a lot is so far, I mean I've used a few of their product their stuff is the uh, the Oh, the um, Google Analytics for it. I don't know if you've, if you've used it, but what it does is it does two Google Analytics tags for you, kind of combined. One that's the entire multi-site, and the other one that's just for the sub-site. Yeah. So that way you can, you know, for, my, for, for us, we have the church, and now we have each of the ministries have their own. And then I can tell you which ministry is doing the best, and then be able to see all of it all in one thing. So. That's pretty cool. I think it's like twenty something bucks on their site. It's worth every penny. Just trying to hack that thing up yourself or come up with something using like Yoast, you know, um, it's not fun. Because it doesn't support. I'm like, come on, Yoast. We love Yoast. Uh, we do, uh, but why do we have that in there? Yoast is blind. He's everywhere. <laughs> Well, he knows how to, he's going to find search terms. And this video pops up with 
Any other questions? No more questions. Go ahead. I'm just wondering, could you quickly just show us how you were using the Google on whatever for the third commitment? The Google on Air, how you connected it and all that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just got it. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of how I would do that. Let me think a second here. If I had two Macs, I could totally do it, but I have a Windows computer and a Mac, so I can't. I have a Mac. Yeah. yeah. Bring it down real quick. Let's see okay. if we can make it happen. Let's see, so if I use your map, oh, I need a... Do these glasses have a mic in them as well? Yeah, as mic has a... Uh, so this is going to be in the live stream, right? Uh, it's going to make it blue for just a second. Okay, okay. Let me just get to refresh real fast. <laughs> yeah, that'd be. <laughs> just private issues. If you want to have, um, if you want to set up one on one videos, um, would you use Google on Air for that? Um, or something else? Ooh, it just, it just died. Um, you would use, if it's just one on one, then what I would do is, uh, yeah, we'll do, it, we'll do it this way. So um, let's see here. To do one-on-one, -on -one, I would do, with no recording, no nothing, mm -hmm. just, just talking. Yeah, Google Hangout. Google Hangout is essentially the Skype replacement. Um, with multiple users, there's a plugin that gets installed in the browser, but that's about it. There's no heavy download. Yeah, it's not owned by Microsoft. It's you know, a WordPress plugin to launch it. No, but Google Hangout has an API that you can tap into to create um, create an event is what you're trying to do. Uh, if you're doing it, well, if it's on air, then you're creating an event. If it's just normal, then you're just kicking off a a hangout. Like an invite yeah. yeah. The the way. You mentioned a Skype replacement. Do you know if Skype is being discontinued or moved away from? I just don't like Skype. I, I don't either. It's crazy heavy. It's incredibly com problematic on my computer. Like yeah. It's uh, more, more complex than Microsoft. Well, that is. It's on Microsoft operating system. No wonder it's a Yeah, it's a Microsoft product. So. Yeah, something's going away because they just want it. Okay. So are we on the same network? Okay. 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 Here. Here. Yeah, 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 perfect. Yeah. All right. Let me just uh, get it to. Especially when like you have a child, it's a little bit more uh, not formal, but more just personal, I guess. Instead of just getting a phone call, so you can see the child's reactions. Yeah, by all means. I'm just getting your credit card numbers on the right now. Not with that one. Not that you couldn't do it. Let me get on. My problem is, is that these two computers aren't seeing each other. Unfortunately. And you know, with the Skype spam, for that matter, they get people at this kind of pop in. Yeah. People buy this. In the Skype, yeah, I yeah. Know, get these weird notifications sometimes. They'll say like emergency. <laughs> Here, we'll just do it. Yeah, I'll we'll do it this way. <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> way. 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 I think I'll be able to just happen this way. All right, I'll show you guys. I'm going to show you guys how this uh, Google Hangout stuff works. Um, I can't kick one off, obviously, or I'll kick out the three viewers that are watching currently. But what? I'll show you the interface and show you how, how the live stream portion of it works. Uh-huh, no problem. 
blurry right now because the light's really bad. Do you want to turn off the center though? No, I, uh, uh, yeah, the, it, the lights are just doing weird stuff. Uh, I'm trying to search for. Just give it a second to find my. Yep, it is. Oh, we got to flick with it for a moment. There it is. Yes, uh, uh, sweet. I'm just going to open the paradox here. This is going to be rad. I was going to say, let's <laughs> <more> infinite. <laughs> yeah. Jason, Jason. So let's hide uh, this, um, this thing over here. And we'll turn off the questions. OK. So this is the standard interface that um, uh, one moment. OK. So this is the standard interface that you use on, um, on Google Hangout. Video. My camera's having a hard time focusing. All right. So, um, so this is Google Hangout um, on air is what we're currently using. And what this thing does is it gives you this nice clean interface that they recently change because they usually change every you know, couple weeks. And what happens is down here on the bottom is you can see the um, the audio meter, so you can actually you know, see it go up and down on the bottom down there. Um, this is start and stop the broadcast. Um, once you start a broadcast, you can't. Once you start a broadcast, you can only stop it once, and that's it. There's no start and stop. Um, the over here is our links. If you click on this, you can get the event link, which is your YouTube video link. This can be used for OEmbed, which is what we did for uh, my website and for uh, uh, if OEmbed worked with like Meetup.com or whatever, people can click on this and look at it. The, this is the old school um, iframe from uh, from YouTube. If I close this, you can see the number of viewers that are currently watching. And again, this is a YouTube video, so they don't have to watch it live. They can actually watch it, you know, um, after the fact. Uh, up here is a way of um, enhancing the photo. I love that I clicked focus. And it's I mean, it's not focused currently. <laughs> Give me one second here. Let me get this thing to focus. There we go. So you can change this up a little bit. You can make it brighten. You can make it spotlight, warm, smooth, uh, black and white, and then you get the original. And this is just by clicking on this little thing up here to enable that. Um, tells you if you're live or not, which we currently are. Um, this lets you change the camera that it's going to be using. So for instance, I have a couple cameras that are here. Uh, so for instance, if I went to the built-in camera, it will switch to the built-in camera. Um, if I go and switch this, I have another camera that's set up, which is that device I was talking about. Um, this is where we will open up the box. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. <laughs> it's pulling in a video of the video for the video. Um, the other thing is if you're doing, if you're using Google Hangout for like a concert or church, small church, or small gathering or whatever, and you want really high quality vocals, or if you want to hear every little echo that happens in the smaller room, um, turning on this voice to studio will make that microphone essentially big, huge ears and just listen in on everything. So somebody having a conversation in the background, it'll actually pick up all of that. Um, what this is essentially doing is, if you know anything about audio, this is pretty much using a noise gate, and it's also using uh, lower quality or right now it's using a lower quality compression, or rather more compressed. If I switch this out, it'll be a, a lower quality, or higher quality, but a lower compression, which means you'll use more, um, more bandwidth. Um, up here you have a couple different um, things to change. You can change the, uh, the function here if you want it to be HD all the way down to standard definition, or just the video, or just the audio itself. So if you're on location, you have horrible you know, uh, cell service, horrible phone service, horrible whatever, you have know, low bandwidth DSL or something like that, you can just change this. And now the video just went to like that, which is just me talking, and that's all they're seeing, to a really horrible kind of uh, Super Mario Brothers you know, <laughs> setup, and then kind of working its way up to the full HD quality. Uh, you turn off and on your video, turn off and on your mic, and this one is to um, add someone to a call. Um, 
Yeah, and then um, over here on the far left, you have a few different things. Uh, this one is a, a, it's like a podcasting studio app to do mixing of audio and stuff. So if you turn on that studio thing, turn on this thing over in the top corner here, um, it will give you a, a full mixing studio. So if you had someone in one part of the country doing guitar, another guy doing drums, you could actually do all the mixing and recording and everything using this. Um, yeah, the chat interface that shows up over on the side. Um, on my show, WP Water Cooler, this chat interface is how we kind of do our back channel, making fun of one another, trying to you know mess each other up while you're talking and stuff. That's how you would do that. So if you go over here, type in something over here, hit the save button, then you can see this person said this and at what time they said it. So I guess you could submit that to your lawyer. And then you also have a screen share, so you can uh, do screen sharing of whatever is on whatever's on the screen. So you could do if you have multiple multiple desktops, it shows the multiple desktops. You could have um, this particular window that I'm in, or another window. So if I click on this other window, now um, the this application is now is now displaying the applications window versus the uh, the screen. If I switch back, now I can see me on the screen. Um, the QA th Q and A thing is what I was kind of describing at the very beginning, where if somebody was on Google Plus or on YouTube and they wanted to ask a question, they can ask a question, and I can field the question from here. Um, it'll show me the questions that I answered, which this person said, you know, great work, and then any of the spam that came in, which we didn't have any spam, and then um, also you can do a capture. This is great if you want to take embarrassing pictures of the people that are on the show that draw. You hit the little button and it takes your picture. Now everyone that is in this Hangout can now download this photo and use it for whatever uses they want. <laughs> you would never get a say, right? No, never. <laughs> um, cameraman's pretty sweet. Um, we don't use Cameraman on, um, on WP Water Cooler, but uh, we could. Um, what it does is it, it lets you have a separate computer sitting here who somebody who is not on camera can now control the camera itself. So if you had someone that wants to do, uh, maybe this person talks too much so you can lower them down some, or maybe this person has a really, um, uh, their microphone's too far away or too close or whatever, you can change their volume. Uh, you can also kind of control the way that, uh, you can control the way that the that their their audio is. You can also kind of uh, so if it's too bassy, to whatever, you can kind of change those things. Um, that's not loading up right now, but there's that. Um, if I remember correctly, this is what they're going to be using for uh, Word Sesh. So they have a person that's from the Word Sesh team that's going to be using this, and they can mask themselves out, and now no one will be able to see them. Um, if they're going to add somebody else, kind of the next person that's going to come on, they can use Cameraman to turn on and off those people as they are introduced. They can still hear everything that's going on, they can't talk, and you can kind of turn them on and off as needed. Could you tell us what Word Sesh is briefly? Yeah, Word Sesh is um, it's a 24-hour um, Word Camp. So you could be at home and watch 24 hours with the WordPress. Live stream, right? Live stream. And it uses uh, Google Hangout. Mm -hmm. On it. Starting when? I don't remember off the top of my head. It's Friday. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah, this Friday. It's You're Friday. right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it, but I'm not, I don't remember it. <laughs> um, you have Google Effects. This is like my favorite one in the whole wide world. Uh, <laughs> I'm totally going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the, uh, this is again. literally the first thing everybody puts on. Oh, yeah. Any Google thing, it doesn't matter if you're, it's a board meeting. <laughs> Every single one of the guys is right from Yeah, you can yeah, you blow out those candles. Congratulations. <laughs> Pirate face with cat ears and who knows what. So you can push all these things. Um, if you are doing like the morning show type of thing, <laughs> you can make. Essentially, hearing myself. But what you can do is uh, you know, push the uh, clap button and clap. <laughs> so there's that. Um, the other thing you can use. 
The other thing you can use is um, you can play YouTube videos with people. So if you wanted to watch a YouTube video together and it's fully synced and everything, you can use that. And then this one's a remote desktop. So if you use like TeamViewer or um, Join.me or something like that to kind of see somebody else's desktop, you can actually use this and, and then enable it on yours and enable it on theirs, and now you can control their desktop. Is that new? No, it's been there for a little while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then there's other apps too. So if you if you click this little sideways hamburger thing, and then go to add apps, you can uh, kind of enable all these and get information about about them. So storyboards, YouTube. This one's if you want to draw with your friends, and this one's uh, for doing drawing tools and stuff. So you have all of those kind of built into this. <laughs> you play poker? You <laughs> like bottom thirds, right? Yeah, the lower third thing's pretty cool. So you, if you go over to, this is the one we use on, on uh, WP Water Cooler. So if we go to here and go to Hangout Toolbox, just waiting for it to load up. So this thing over on the, on the far right hand side um, adds some additional features. This is kind of like the way that cameraman would work, but this is for if you're actually on the show wanting to interact. So we could put in uh, my name. We could put in my logo. You know, uh, I don't have something off the top. You can put all that stuff in there, hit the button, and now my information shows up. My logo, oh, sorry, it's really dark. This is my logo and all that sort of thing. Uh, let me turn off the mouse position thing. Yeah, so you can see the uh, this. I didn't realize this so dark. My apologies. So you can see all of the everything show up, show up here. You can save presets of these, and then you can change those, and then you can flip flop between them. So you know, setting your colors if you're on you know, different programs or whatever, and then kind of you know, saving each one of them, you can jump or jump between them. And then if somebody's annoying and you want to make them quiet, you can use this to make them quiet. There's like a, a volume control thing. Um, a little bit, and then come back, and now they can see us again. Now, how do you invite them to join? Yeah, so Google Hangout um, gives you a couple different options for that. Uh, one of them is this URL right here up on the top. Um, if someone was smart enough to type all that stuff in from home <laughs> that's watching, they could jump in on this Google Hangout right now just by just by connecting to it. The other way you could do it is you could um, invite somebody. I don't know if I'm a friend of this. Yep, I am. So we'll invite me. Okay, so they have to have Google Plus Oh, yeah. Yep, definitely. So then um, I've actually used this for remote camera situations where you wanted to be able to have someone else, uh, you know, uh, you want to have somebody walk around with a camera and you could switch between them. You could actually have a whole bunch of phones be used as, as remote cameras at a party or something. So you can use this to switch between them all. Um, you can also do a comment tracker, and I think that's about it. Yeah, you can auto load that lower third, make it so you're automatically muted when you first come in, and that sort of thing. So this is this is pretty much what we use for for WP Water Cooler when we you know, do our show. So that Hangout Toolbox is that an additional app that you guys just opened up within Google? Or yeah, it's Google just you. Yeah, if you click on this little thing down here and then click on Add Apps, you can add that app and install it. Are these are all browser plugins? Uh, yeah, it's one. This is one um, plugin uh, called Google Hangout, and then within that is these little modules that you can enable. And this thing's one of those things where somebody was like, "This would be really great if I could have a lower third." So they made one called Lower Third, and then someone else was like, "Man, it'd be really great if we had a comment tracker." Somebody else made a comment tracker, and then they're like, "You know what? I hate having to switch between all these apps." So they just merged them all together, and now you have, you know, this um, hangout toolbox. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and close. It's about five minutes to nine. We appreciate everybody 